Hey, it's Michelle, you're a CNC Biology Tutor again. Welcome back to the Know the Differences series in which I look at important terms that you need to understand. In this video, I'll be looking at transport in plants and I'll be paying special attention to the two transport tissue, the xylem and the phloem, and we're going to differentiate between the two of them in terms of their structural differences and their functional differences. So let's begin with the xylem. The xylem consists of the transport vessels conducting water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. Now remember this, these water and the minerals are going to be coming from the soil, so they need to get into the roots and be transported upwards to the leaves where photosynthesis can take place. So just recall that photosynthesis requires water as a raw material, so that is how the water gets into the plant. So these xylem vessels are very important in transporting that water from the roots upwards to the leaves for photosynthesis. Now the key points to remember about the structure of these xylem vessels. First of all, they're made up of dead tissue. So the reason that the tissue is dead, meaning that the cells are not living, this prevents any chemical reactions going on in the cells. Water can react with different substances in the cells to carry out different reactions, so we definitely don't want that happening. The whole purpose of the xylem vessel is strictly for conducting the water and the minerals upwards. So you don't want the water stopping and reacting with anything in the cells, so that is the reason why the tissue is dead. Now the second point to note is that the tubes are long, thin and hollow with no end walls. So this facilitates a smooth upward movement of the water. So as you can see, the third point says the flow of materials is upwards only, meaning that it's unidirectional. So it's going from the roots to the leaves. So this long, thin, hollow tube is going to facilitate that movement and the end walls is going to prevent any obstruction of the water flow. So the flow of water is assisted by the capillarity forces. So that is the forces between the water molecules and then the water molecules and the xylem walls. So we need to keep that water and the minerals going upwards. So think of the suction movement of water going through a straw. So the xylem vessels act like a straw for the plant. So the final point, the walls of the xylem vessels are lignified. So they have this substance which is usually found in wood. So you know wood is a very hard substance. So the lignified walls give the strength and the support to the xylem. So that gives it that strength, makes it strong, and helps to keep the xylem upright. Alright, so that is the xylem. Let's look at the phloem. Now the phloem consists of the transport vessels con conducting organic material. And by organic material, I mean mostly sugars. And these sugars would be sucrose. So this material would be going from the leaves, generally, to the roots of the plant. So just remember, in photosynthesis, glucose is manufactured. So that glucose is then converted into the sucrose, which needs to be transported from the leaves to the roots. So the key points to remember about the phloem is that it's made up of living tissue, unlike the xylem. So the living tissue is in the phloem, dead tissue in the xylem. And this living tissue consists of companion cells and sieve tube elements. Now the companion cells are the, the cells that are going to be controlling the functions of both cells. So they consist of the nucleus, so they control all the activities going on in both the companion cell and the sieve tube element, which is responsible for the transport of the sugars. And you would notice that we have these perforations, or the end walls, which are broken down to form these sieve plates. And then you can see that the flow of materials is moving in both directions, upwards and downwards. So it's bidirectional movement. All right, let's look at both of the vessels together. So you can see how they work together to transport materials. So the xylem is responsible for transporting the water along with the minerals, and the transpiration stream would help with that. So the water and the minerals are going upwards, while in the phloem, you can see that the translocation of sucrose, so that's the movement of the sucrose from where they are made in the source, that is the leaves, to where they need to be used in the roots and other parts of the plant, so that is the sink. 
So that is a translocation of sucrose in the fluent. All right, so you should be good now with the structural and functional differences of the xylem and the phloem. So I hope this was a great help to you in understanding these differences.